okay okay guys so for today's current affairs the first article is on center promotes navic navigation with indian constellation as homegrown alternative to gps so center is pushing smartphone makers to enable support for its navic navigation system in new devices from next year so finally we are going to have navic based map system or other equivalent apps right similar to gps now aim of this move is to remove dependence on foreign satellite systems for navigation service requirements particularly for strategic sectors this will remove the risk of service being withdrawn or denied in a given situation right so let's look at these two points in a little bit of detail the first point is about removing dependence on foreign satellite systems so the first advantage is that we will be getting some revenue out of it and in a very basic terms there will be a revenue generation because the apps would be using navic um, system from which is by government so government is now having an additional revenue stream secondly in strategic sectors or simply an app which is about defense or it's it's for uh, the persons who are in our armed forces who need to use map services to look at something they are countered by the oppositions so for example let's say uh, it's a it's a hypothetical hypothetical situation but you have a person a who is in the indian army is trying to infiltrate in pakistan's um boundaries right and he is using gps a map or a map based application on an android phone the problem is that what he is saying the same thing would be seen by the other side pakistan's army right so they could you know already intercept what is going to happen or is happening so due to these factors the strategic sectors are always in some some sort of um, inertia so remove that to remove that inertia the government is now using this particular um, service or promoting the service secondly we have the service being withdrawn denied so it, it, uh, the basic thing is that in a case of a war with some uh, high level uh, like if if a war happens so government can deny access to gps all over the uh, all across the country okay coming back to navic so navic it is an independent standalone navigation satellite system developed by the isro Second consists of eight satellites and covers the whole of India's landmass and up to fifteen hundred kilometer from its boundaries. The system was earlier known as IRNSS or Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System. Presently, there are four navigation satellite systems. The first is GPS from US, GLONASS from Russia, Galileo from EU, and Baidu from China. In addition, there are two regional systems. The first is Navic from India and uh qzss from japan what are the applications of navic so in disaster management in vehicle tracking and fleet management integration with mobile phones and precise timing mapping a geo data, data capture integration uh, sorry integration with mobile phones and precise timing visual and voice navigation terrestrial area and marine navigation okay so this was all about navic okay bro actually i want to ask uh, on doubt see uh, in ir nss uh, how many satellites are there in geo stationary and uh, in that um, geo synchronous orbits uh, is it 3 uh, 3 4 right now whether they increased or uh, is it same like there are three satellites in geo stationary and three uh, four in uh, geo synchronous orbits so is it same or do, are they increased see uh, i this ir and ss yeah i know okay. correct so till i was reading i remember till g after that h failed and then there was i so till i remember we had around um, nine satellites were launched out of which eight were operational so i have no idea whether there were further uh, satellites which were launched right so i am uh, giving my opinion based on those eight satellites i have not updated that particular account so in those eight okay, satellites okay. Mm-hmm. there were around mm-hmm. three geo uh, yeah there were sorry there were five yes, geo yes, station 
five there were five geo stationary okay. no no there were three geo stationary mm -hmm. and five geo synchronous yeah i remember remember there were okay. three uh, geo stationary and there were five geo synchronous Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, see, this was uh, uh, 2018 prelims question. Uh, how many satellites are uh, there under this IR NSS? So uh, I read like uh, three satellites in geostationary. Now it is they are saying like eight. So that is why I confused. So we have five geosynchronous uh, satellites right now, and yeah. three geostationary. Also, I have to update on okay. this topic. I also have to update this okay. uh, on this topic, but till I remember, because what happens was we we have launched uh, nine out of nine. The in the last two, what happened was the penultimate. That is your A B C H. Yeah. So your H that malfunctioned or its launch was unsuccessful. So then we launched I. So till eight to okay. three, we have a successful launch, and then H failed. And then we had I. So in this eight satellites, five were uh, geosynchronous and three were geostationary. Okay, so like geosynchronous, uh, synchronous means they uh, they are in sync with this uh, Earth's revolution, right? Or something else? Uh, geosynchronous. Again, uh, see, geosynchronous simply means that in all of the day it's there is one particular point which it would be traveling in 24 hours again and again that is it's moving it's moving across the earth or uh, atmosphere okay. or orbit and what is happening is okay. that every 24 hours there is particular position that it would be uh, coming back to right so if let's say okay okay it is revolving around the uh... Earth yeah. in line with Earth, right? Yeah. Geostationary means the, they will be stationed at particular point. And correct. They don't so they would be yeah, mapping. Yeah. They would be mapping uh, exact that particular terrain for twenty four hours, right? So I mean, Indore, okay, okay. Indore would be, um, you know, Indore would be uh, surveyed twenty four hours continuously if I if there's a geostationary satellite for such purposes and if there is a geosynchronous satellite every 24 hours the satellite will come and then leave so there would be a very short window in which the satellite would be serving okay. that particular area okay, okay and, I got uh, it, I got it. Yeah. and there's a reason why we have only three geostationary till now they may make it uh, make it four but uh, there's a scientific re uh, reason for three geostationary so what happens is that if i have to interlock you at a place or simply if i have to uh have a precision of a particular point on a map right so it is uh oftenly referred that oh sorry oftenly accepted that three distinct eye views right three distinct eye views can have uh, can help in uh giving a precision about that point so if i have to have precision about a particular point on map minimum three eyes i need from various angles so that is the reason why government presently must be having only three geostationary because it completes the purpose what government needs which is mapping a map or uh, mapping our boundaries okay okay bro i got it okay okay guys so let's move on to the second article which is about government commits rupees 7385 crore under the fund of fund for startups FFS India Investment in 88 Alternative Investment Funds AIFs. So let's first of, first of all look at what are these AIF. So in category one, we have investment in startup, small medium enterprises, projects which are socially economically viable. Example of such funds: so we have venture capital funds, infrastructure, angel fund, social venture fund, etc. Category two, the investment by the these funds are directly into equity or debt securities example we have private equity fund we have debt fund we have fund of funds finally in category three we have investment aimed at short-term returns achieved by employing complex trading strategies example of hedge fund another is private investment in public equity fund or buy 
So MCI or Ministry of Commerce and Industry also stated that these 88 AIFs in turn have further invested Rs 11,206 crore in 720 startups. Performing startups supported through FFS show valuation increased by more than 10 times. It was launched under the Startup India Initiative in 2016 to mobilize domestic capital to give the Indian startup ecosystem. It was announced with the corpus of Rs 10,000 crore, which is to be built over 14th and, final, uh, sorry, 14th and 15th finance commission cycles through budgetary support by Depart or Depart. Under FFS, support is extended to SEBI registered AIFs, which in turn invest in startups. And SIDBI is the implementing agency for the FFS benefits. So it made capital available for startups at early stage C stage. We are facilitating uh, raising of domestic capital, reducing dependence on foreign capital, encouraging domestic and new venture capital funds. So simply the virtuous cycle of investment. Now, AIFs are privately pooled investment funds whether from Indian or foreign sources in the form of a trust, a company, a body corporate or a limited liability partnership. Family trust, employee welfare trust and gratuity trust are not counted as AIFs. Okay, so this becomes important point of our AIF. That family trust, employee welfare trust and gratuity trust are not counted as alternative investment funds. Okay, so this was all about AIF. Now let's move on to the next article, which is about India experience, uh, experiencing triple trip La Nina phenomena. So India is seeing an extended spell of the La Nina called a triple dip La Nina. Triple dip La Nina is a phenom uh, phenomena lasting across three winter seasons in the northern uh, hemisphere. This is only the third time since 1950 that a triple dip La Nina has been observed. As per WMO, it is likely that the protracted La Nina event will last until at least the end of the year, becoming the century's first triple dip La Nina. About La Nina, so it's a weather pattern that occurs in Pacific Ocean. It, it is observed when sea surface temperatures in eastern equatorial Pacific get comparatively colder than normal. This results in a strong high pressure over tropical west, uh, sorry, uh, over Eastern Equatorial Pacific, and it is counterpart to El Nino, which is character, characterized by unusually warm SSTs and causes suppressed monsoon. So, in short, we have a small diagram sh uh, showing over here what happens when La Nina comes. So, due to La Nina, this particular area becomes colder. This does not impact the current, the equatorial current, due to which the force takes the moisture or uh, initiates the ITCG over here and slowly we see a higher monsoon season occurring in India or your tropical west coast of South America. Impact of La Nina, so we have better monsoon rains in India. We have frequent and intense hurricane and cyclones in Atlet uh, Atlantic Ocean Bay of Bengal. We have drought in Peru and Ecuador, which are on South, which are in South America on eastern side of Pacific and high temperatures in Western Pacific, Indian Ocean and off the Somalian coast. So this was all about La Nina and the triple dip phenomena observed for the first time in this century. Next, Renewable Energy and Jobs Annual Review, review 2022 report by IRENA. So International Renewable Energy SNC and the ILO provided the latest estimates of renewable energy employment globally. India related findings. So India's goal of 500 gigawatts of non-fossil fuel energy sources by 2030 could create 3.5 million new job opportunities. India accounted for about 80% of global hydropower employment followed by Brazil. Other key findings. So in renewable energy sector, it employed 12.7 million people across the world in 2021. Solar energy was the fastest growing sector. The share of women in the decentralized renewable energy workforce is still low, particularly for skilled jobs due to the low participation in STEM fields. Report highlights issue of job quality and labor standards in the mining and processing of raw material inputs and in handling of materials once renewable energy generating facilities are decommissioned. So the two phenomena 
or uh, actions are named as upstream downstream so when the energy facilities get decommissioned it is called downstream and when there is a setting up of a new uh, industry or mining sector so as to produce raw material inputs it's called upstream trade disputes and geopolitical rivalries are reinforcing interest in localization of supply chains go to enhance resilience in the face of external shocks and to boost domestic value creation and jobs estimated number of direct and indirect jobs in renewable energy by industry so india is approximately generating around 863000 jobs or simply 863000 jobs next we have election commission to push for internal democracy within parties so recently the ec had come out against a political party that parties with any permanent position will be inherently anti democratic internal democracy in political parties also known as intra party democracy refers to the level and methods of including party members in the decision making and deliberation within the party structure it is usually known to nurture citizens political competencies and of producing more capable representatives significance of internal democracy so close party autocratic structures impact the constitution right of all citizens which is to equal political opportunity to participate in politics and contest election it allowed the decentralization of power through local level party for, uh, offices diverse opinions enrich not only the democratic spirit in the party but in country and motivate the youth to join politics challenges so procedure for de uh, determining the leadership and composition of the parties is not completely open and inclusive rpa 1951 does not mandate internal elections and esi uh, sorry eci cannot take punitive action against registered political parties for violating the principles of inner party democracy so this short article on inter party democracy however the main thing to again notice that we have problems when it comes to reforms in political parties themselves right okay so after that important part article now we have next one which is on international trade of two hazardous pesticides recommended for prior informed consent in short the pic which is a part or which is under rotterdam convention is a mechanism for for so for, sorry for formally obtaining and disseminating the decisions of importing parties on their willingness to receive future shipments of hazardous chemicals recommendations were made by chemical review committee for two hazardous pesticides eprodion uh, dion and tubifos eprodion is a fungicide used on vines fruits trees and vegetables and has been classified as carcinogen uh, carcinogenic tubifos on the other hand is a soil insecticide which is commonly used in crops such as sorghum maize wheat and potatoes now it has also been found to pose a risk to aquatic organism due to its toxicity in india they were permitted by 2015 anupam verma committee report and it is on the largest exporters of tubifos what is the rotterdam convention so it creates legally binding obligation for the implementation of eic procedure it covers pesticides and industrial chemicals that have been banned or severely restricted and crc is a subsidiary body of rotterdam convention established to review chemical and pesticide formulations according to criteria set out by convention okay what are the other two conventions that are generally uh, talked about or mentioned whenever we are discussing rotterdam convention what is the what are the trinity of those convention um it's a convention on wastage sorry basel and basel convention on this plastic wastage and another one is uh, i don't know about the other one like uh, london convention on marine no marine stock stockholm mm -hmm. convention on persistent organic pollutants for pops okay okay mm. yeah and basel is on uh, transboundary movement okay so we have these okay. three conventions which you can call the trinity of environmental 
conventions on uh, transboundary movement of various chemicals and other materials. So next, in the prelims section, we have foreign trade policy extended. So the current foreign, foreign trade policy 2015-20 has been extended for six months due to currency volati uh, sorry, volatility and global uncertainty. Earlier, the government had extended till September 30, 2022. So about foreign trade policy, set of guidelines and instructions in matters related to import and export of goods formulated by Director General of Foreign Trade and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry every five years. Operation Southern Readiness. So recently, INS Sunyana entered Port Victoria sessions to participate in this exercise of combined maritime forces. CMF is a multinational naval partnership to promote security, stability and prosperity on international waters. And India is not a member to CMF. Exercise is being attended by delegation from USA, Italy, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and ship, ship participation from UK, Spain, and India. In related news, INS Tarkash, the Indian naval ship, marked first ever visit by any INS to Gabon as part of its ongoing development in Gulf of Guinea for anti-piracy petrol. Next, silence. It's an Android app that is launched to promote and um, make citizens aware about the Indian sign language and this particular app currently contains 10,000 signs sorry sign language dictionary for 10,000 words. Indian sign language research and training center was instrumental in launching this app and this intends to make the Indian sign language dictionary easily ava available and to make it more accessible for the public at large. Then we have Jaldut app developed by Ministry of Rural Development. It is to identify the groundwater levels in selected villages. It will enable Gram Rojgar Sahayak to measure the water level of selected wells twice a year, pre-monsoon and post-monsoon, and data collected could be utilized as part of Gram Panchayat Development Plan and Mandrega Planning Exercises. Next, we have Whitefly. So, Whitefly attack on Rabi crop has been reported in Rajasthan. It's a pest of cotton that lowers yield by feeding on the underside of the leaf. It spread diseases like cotton leaf curl virus. It feeds on the sap of the leaves, leaves and releases glued into the leaves on which a black fungus grows. Next, we have Madhav National Park. So, tigers being reintroduced in MNP after more than six decades after they were last seen there. Madhav National Park, situated in Madhya Pradesh in Shifpuri district, and was notified as a national park in year 1958. Sakya Sagar and Madhav Sagar are the two lakes. And Madhi Kheda Dam is also situated. Flora, so northern tropical dry deciduous mixed forest as well as dry thorn forest. Kardai, uh, Kardai is a dominant tree species. In fauna, we have Nilgai, Chinkara, Chausimba, and deers such as Chitkal and Sambar. Next, Nila Kurunji flowers. So these are flowers that blooms in regions of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and Karnataka. And they blooms once every 12 years season. However, due to changing weather patterns over the years, the blooming seasons have now become more and more unpredictable. The altitude where they grow is nearly around 1300 to 2400 meters. Next, we have real-time train information system. So it's a GPS-based technology developed in collaboration with ISRO being installed on the locomotives for automatic acquisition of train movement timing at the stations. Under this, train movement will automatically plot on the control chart of those trains in the control office application system and will be used to direct loco to, uh, locomotive communication to help trains operate during harsh weather and avoid collisions. Next, we have Avgas 100LL. So it's an indigenous developed uh, special aviation fuel meant for piston engine aircrafts and unmanned aerial vehicles. Significance, high octane aviation fuel, superior performance, serves the need of thriving aviation industry and is developed by Indian Oil Corporation. And finally, Battukama festival celebrated as, oh, sorry, is a lava festi festival celebrated in Telangana and some parts of Andhra Pradesh. Celebrated as per the Satvahan calendar during Navratri and it honors the life giver Battukama with women seeking her blessings for prosperity and a good year. 
So, the Union Ministry for Tourism, Culture, and Development of North East has announced the celebration of Battu Kama at the India Gate. It is one of the most unique festivals of Telangana and once celebrated mainly by the women of this region. So, this was all for today's current affairs. Okay.